okay, uh, if, if I remember correctly. So about the halakha development, right? Um, so how, uh, who, who's these rabbis who tell us what to do basically, right? That's a good question for a day. So um, all of the all of the laws that, that we have today, they were passed uh, in two forms. One is a uh, written law, which is uh, the, the, where we have a, a Chumash, these five books of Moshe. And the uh, second part is the oral tradition. So that was uh, given to, to our teacher Moshe Rabbeinza orally. So and until just, uh, I don't know, so it, it, and it was forbidden to write it down. All of these years was forbidden. So, and people had like uh, some little notes, like some reminders for, for themselves, but uh, but was uh, it was completely forbidden to write down. Okay, and uh, after some times when uh, um, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, that, that he saw that we that very soon it's going to end and we're going to disperse and there's no more scholars that remember all the oral law of Baha'i by heart. And what he did, he compiled Mishnah. So Mishnah is condensed laws. If if you read the Mishnah, you understand that you understand exactly zero. It feel not smart to say the least. At least I feel not smart, right? Uh, because even things that you you thought that you understand when you try to like you go into town, you see that explanation. It's exactly opposite. Unless you you learn in person and you know it from from other sources that it's uh, like the way the things work. So you, you cannot learn the laws from the Mishnah. But in this, in his time, yeah, people could could learn the laws from the Mishnah. They knew exactly what uh, what was said there. Um, and after that, uh, we have uh, after another few hundred years, so people saw that even the Mishnah is not enough. People do not understand what to do, and that's how Talmud started. And our sages they discussed what it says in the Mishnah, and they came to conclusion. Finally, some sometimes they would come to final conclusion. Sometimes they would not come to final conclusion. Okay, doesn't matter. And then comes uh, after some time, it's come Tur, this Rabbi Tur, he compiled the Shulchan Aruch, first Shulchan Aruch, that uh, comes Rambam. He compiled this Mishnah Torah, as, as we learned it, as we learned this, like at least pieces from Mishnah Torah. And then um, uh, 350, to 300, uh, 300 to 400 years later, came uh, uh, Shulchan Aruch, Rabbi Yosef Karazatzal, and he compiled uh, Shulchan Aruch from Rambam, from Tur, from Rif, from these uh, great sages, from others also as well. And, um, and uh, that's how we know what to do. So that's, uh, that's how we know what to do today, right? And our contemporary rabbis, they look at Shulchan Aruch, they look at Talmud, and see how, like uh, what this, uh, let's say, uh, um, is is the light that the light bulb when it came out first came out? So there is a there was a difference of the opinions among the rabbis. Is it light? Is it fire? Or it's not fire, right? For I don't know for so many years there were difference of opinions. Some say it's fire, some say it's not fire. What's the difference? According to some, you can uh, turn the, the switch on Shabbos. According to them, you're going to Michal Shabbos. So it's a huge difference, right? Um, and uh, and uh, then the, the, the halacha just developed. So they, they, they say, yes, this incandescent bulb, for sure, it's a fire. So that was final decision. And uh, then, uh, from then, uh, Rabbi just compared the cases, like uh, the, the cases in the Talmud, uh, the cases in Shulchan Aruch, and see how, what it can compare to. And that's how they, they know what to do with uh, refrigerators, uh, with the motors, with the... Uh, uh, with the timers, so timers just uh, in summary, uh, in summary. So the, the, there is a uh, there is a section in Talmud that says uh, if you open the uh, the water channel in uh, be, be before Shabbos starts, so it can uh, it can water your your garden during the Shabbos, no no problem. So the, the logic is that you don't. Uh, um, uh, so you don't you don't have to you you're not doing anything active on Shabbos, so there is no problem. So you're allowed. So same is here. So you're allowed to to leave the switch on on, on Shabbos with your light. You you're allowed to to keep your uh, uh, as we said yesterday water on going. There is no problem. You're not doing anything actively or your uh, stove going. There is no problem. Uh, assuming that you're not cooking. 
and um, what else? Like everything, right? Then timer. So if you if you set the timer before Shabbos, it, technically it can turn off your lights or uh, turn on your air conditioners, whatever you need. Okay, that's uh, how it's uh, developed in summary nutshell. Thank you.